this proposal is a way to show to the legislature, to our colleagues here, but also to our constituents back home and the communities we represent, that it is possible to write a budget that is balanced, that funds all of our shared priorities and the state's ongoing needs, but does so in a way that neither raises taxes nor cuts critical services. This budget tries to help working families. It funds a sales tax rebate called the Working Families Tax Credit, which is a program that has existed in state law for over a decade, but has never once been funded by the majority party. Republicans figured out a way to fund it. We also cut sales taxes on other basic household necessities like diapers, prepared food you buy at a grocery store, breast pumps. We're doing a lot of things to reduce the tax burden on working families and just make living more affordable, reducing the cost of health care and child care, making child care options more affordable. We're also trying to help students. The science and data is clear that schools aren't a place where the virus spreads and they should be open. And so this budget provides plenty of incentives for districts to open their doors to in-person instruction and provides them resources to help kids recover from the learning loss they experienced during remote instruction environments. The budget also provides a lot of help for vulnerable populations. You know, before coronavirus hit, the biggest topic we were debating down here in Olympia was how to fix the growing homelessness crisis. Well, a lot of folks have lost sight of that, but it's not like the homelessness crisis was solved in the middle of the pandemic. If anything, it's gotten worse. The governor's plan continues to peanut butter money around to the same programs that have gotten money for the last decade when we've seen the problem spiral out of control. It's clear a new approach is needed. The House Republican approach would give cities over $200 million a year to fight the problem, which is more money total than the governor's proposing, but it would do so in a different way. It would let cities and counties make the decisions over how to spend that money rather than bureaucrats in Olympia. And it would require cities and counties to do two really fundamental things to actually help fix the problem and make our communities safer. In order to get the money, they would have to agree not to permit heroin injection sites in their cities. And they'd have to agree to ban camping within a thousand feet of schools, parks, and playgrounds. Foundational public health is one of those core government functions we never think about needing until we're in the middle of a pandemic. And this last year showed just how underfunded our public health system is. And the governor had a plan to increase funding, but he would pay for that by taxing our own health insurance plans, which just seems like the exact wrong solution to a very important problem. The House Republican plan funds his proposal for increased public health spending, but it doesn't raise taxes on anybody to do it. So we fund a lot of things that will help a lot of ordinary Washingtonians, working families, growing students, vulnerable populations, small businesses, and everybody else in between. And we do so in a way that doesn't cut services to anybody and doesn't raise taxes on anybody else. Republicans spent months combing through the state budget looking for ways we could save money without actually cutting services to people. And this budget puts all of those savings ideas onto a piece of paper for the public to judge. So, you know, we're simply identifying areas in which the state is either wasteful or inefficient or could have a better policy because it's spending money on things that don't deliver a result. If a study has shown that a program has a negative cost-benefit ratio or has a 0% chance of achieving a positive outcome. We should stop funding those programs. We should admit that while it was a good idea at the time, it turns out it didn't work like we thought, and we should find other ways to solve those problems. So Republicans spent the last six months pouring through the budget trying to find these things. Most of them are pretty small. Any single one isn't going to magically balance the budget, but taken together, they're the kinds of things that the legislature should have been doing every year forever, and we haven't been, but it means that this time there's a lot of opportunity to save money, not by cutting services, but by simply discarding programs that don't work, discarding unnecessary overhead and bureaucracy, and pursuing better policies that are wiser uses of taxpayer dollars.